Well, Brian, we're rolling a Camaro. Unfortunately, it's a six cylinder, but that's okay. It's my daughter's car. I can live with that. Cool. But we got to check engine light on, and you know it's rolling perfect. It's driving great. I knew you couldn't take me to lunch without some kind of an agenda. I'll tell you what, if it's not a flashing check engine light, that's probably good, but it's definitely something we need to dig into. Yeah, you know, I'll get it up to Tech Garage. First thing we need to do is scan it and get the code. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got our 2015 Camaro in the shop, and we have a check engine light. Brian, as far as diagnostics are concerned, well, man, I got nothing. It's running great, it's driving great. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I got that check engine light. Pretty rare for you, because usually it's smoking, banging, rattling, something obvious is going on, but that check engine light is usually a good place to start. Yeah, and it's a PO128. I got our handy dandy tool under there, scanned it, no problem. We got two options at this point. Here's your electrical tape. You can tape up the light. It does work nicely over a check engine light, but I'd rather fix the problem. Yeah, Tech Garage, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we need to figure out what is that code, PO128. Well, it's excessive time to get to temperature. Kind of weird. Look at this graphic right here. It actually explains what the computer does, and it's gonna look at the ambient temperature. Brian, what's the ambient temperature now? Here in the room and at the top of the radiator, it's about 68 degrees, which would be what the intake air temperature your sensor is reading as well. Exactly. The car's been sitting, so it's sucking in about 68 degrees air temperature. That's great. Well, the computer looks at that, and then all of a sudden he looks at the engine coolant temperature. Well, that's going to go up every time we crank it. Day one, day two, it's going up. Day three, well, what about six months? What about a year? What about two years? And it doesn't quite get to where it used to be because it knows time. It knows where it was before. Bam, check engine light. There's our excessive time to temperature. Now, that could be as simple as the coolant fan staying on. Could be, or it could be an open thermostat. That's a common problem where the coolant just continues to pass but never really heats up. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's staying too cold, all yeah. right? Well, one thing we have to also check is our engine coolant temperature sensor because he's the biggest player. I mean, that's what's going on. And I think a diagnostic check's in order. We hooked up our fancy dancy scan tool just so you can see actually what the temperature is when it's plugged in. And what is it showing right now? Yeah, we got 79 degrees. There's the uh, evidence of 66 degrees here in the room. 79 degrees down at the temperature sensor. The vehicle's been off for about an hour, hour and a half. So that's cooled down. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And again, that is a fancy way to show all this. Sure. You can do this with a gauge. I'm sure you'll show. But we're at 79 degrees right now at the so sensor. So that's about right. The car's been in here about an hour. I mean, it's, it's exactly where it should be or close to it. Now, so you can follow this flow chart. And you can follow along at home with us if we pull up this circuit system testing. Now, I already checked the wire resistance in the harness. It's fine. So we can do a couple things here. It says, first of all, verify with a scan tool that it's colder than 39 degrees when you unplug it. Well, that's that's the default, Brian. Check this out. Okay. If I unplug it, yep. we Drops. went to... It's negative 40. That's less than 39. That's nice. So that's a good thing. If it didn't drop that far, well, maybe there was something going on in the wire harness or the gauge. Yeah. But right now, that's pretty good. So the next step, if you look down, you pull the graphic up again, it wants us to actually put a fuse jumper wire between the two terminals. So I have a fuse jumper wire right here. Okay. And if I take it, and I go between the two terminals, go into the car, what that's gonna do is bypass all the resistance. Now when I bypass all the resistance, where did the temperature go? 302. 302, well, our flow chart, look on the page there, it says it has to be 300, all right, or more. That's or more. great, so we're good, 302. Now, all we did, we just verified the integrity of the wire harness all the way up, the computer, everybody's thinking right. Yeah. So we really need to switch over to the component test. Now, engine coolant sensors, they're big players. They are big players. They do so much. The, the rich data coming from the ECT drives how much fuel gets dispensed, drives how the whole warm-up cycle, drives the vehicle getting into closed loop mode, all those things we've talked about before. It's a small guy, but it has a big job. So the component test, again, pretty easy to do right in the driveway, but that's significant. You gotta do this right too. And that's what I love about it. I mean, they're all not catastrophic codes. I mean, this chart is on the actual internet. You can find the chart. It's a resistance value according to the sensor. Now, another cool thing, if you have some wire harnesses, or I actually got this from rockauto.com, little pigtail, I make me a little Good idea. ends to get in there because it's way down here. So I'm gonna reach down here, I'm gonna plug it in, and what we did is we got our meter on resistance. Yep. And what I'm going to do, of resistance yep, here. and I'm going to go across both these terminals, one side, yep. 
And then I can go on the other side here and find the terminal you here. You can find this information online to see exactly what your resistance in this path should be right at the component level. Exactly, and that's, that's huge because, you know, a lot of times these things, they just go open, but I don't believe that's the case here because it's a different code. Yeah. What Seven, are you showing? 7.4 ohms of resistance. Or 7,000. We 7, got K, 000. yeah. 7,400 yeah. ohms of resistance. Now pull up that chart. If you pull up that chart right there, we're sitting, you told us we were at about 66 degrees. If you look at the chart, anywhere from 68 to 86 degrees, we were at 3,000 to 2,000 ohms of resistance. Now look at where we're at. Look at our chart. 7,041 to 7,485 right there. It's supposed to be 41 degrees. Guess what? Yeah, we got a bad component. We got a bad temperature sensor. Bingo. Yeah. The computer doesn't know any better. He right. thinks it's 41 degrees. So, so it's been adjusting fuel. You probably noticed if, you know, if you'd have been paying attention and not driving so fast, you would have seen that your gas mileage probably went down leading up to this. You might have had black smoke at start up. It was definitely running rich. So fascinating. I guess my next step is grab a drain pan and I'm going to go to the rockauto.com shelf, grab a new temperature sensor and get this thing underway. Now Brian's hard at work taking out the engine coolant temperature sensor. How's it coming, buddy? I got to tell you, hardly working. It couldn't be easier. A 19 millimeter socket and the bad guys out. This is one of those small parts that does a big job. It really is. He's a big player. So if you put it down here, let's go ahead and hook it up just like we did before. I'm going to take the negative. I'll hook it up across it. We're in ohms of resistance hooked yep. up just like that. Yep. We can read it and there's our 7,000. 7,700. Yep. yep. So it thinks it's like whatever, 42 degrees. I mean, yeah. he thinks it's cold. Now, yeah. I went to Rock Auto. I got another pigtail, and I have your actual new sensor right here. So let's yeah. go across this just to verify and let everybody see exactly what it should read. And there you go. There's our 3,000. If you pull up that graphic again, you look at the chart, and if you hold that graphic for a second, yep. look at what happens when it gets hot. Resistance actually goes down. Mm -hmm. So as resistance goes down, it's a negative coefficient thermistor. Now check this out. I'm going to go ahead and torch it. It's just like you drive. Exactly. Let's get this thing nice and hot, like the tires. Yep. And see that? Look at that. What's happening in that right resistance? Right down. We're leaning out the fuel mixture. Exactly. It's dropping. And that's what you said earlier, Brian. You had mentioned that it's actually messing with the fuel mixture. It is. And this is a perfect perfect illustration only on Tech Garage can we show you what's going on. Got that fancy scan tool hooked up, actually got the board and you can see right here we got the temperature. Here's the actual engine coolant temperature and the intake air temperature and then we have the fuel injector. So you mentioned the fuel delivery is going to be determined by that temperature. Really cool. Well, fire it up and let's see That's what's going on. Go ahead and fire up the board All up right. there. There we go. All right, oh, there you go. Hold it. It's running now. So what we have is we have 70 degrees and we have a pulse width of injectors right here. So if you change the temperature of the board right there. I want to get the lunch a little quicker. There so you I'm go. Crank Two, it up. three. Look at the pulse width. It's going to change. It's going to adjust. There it goes. Starts to drop down. The hotter it gets, it actually starts to take fuel away. That's pretty cool. So he is a big player. You want to cut that off? Sure. That's going to make all the difference in the world. You actually can see it in action there. And Brian, you better take your sensor and get started. All Heck right. Yeah. Now, if you look at this board right here, this is pretty cool because this is how your dash works, your dash cluster. There's nothing to it. I said it was a negative coefficient thermistor. Well, think about the rheostat in your house. You turn it back and forth, it changes and varies the actual voltage with resistance. So it's sitting right here, the engine coolant temperature sitting in the block. And if you watch the gauge up here, this is nothing more than a variable resistor. So if I change that variable resistor, it's going to go up there, vary the voltage signal, and the gauge is going to change. So it's changing the gauge as it works. So not only was the gauge probably wrong, so was the car and the fuel delivery. Now I'm going to take our vehicle speed and bump it up to about 100 miles an hour because that's what Brian's going at right now as he starts to install it. Well, it really is almost a 100 mile an hour repair. Couldn't be simpler to reinstall this ECT. But before I do, this is a really good time to check the freeze point of your coolant. You can do that with an old school hydrometer. Take a sampling, check it, make sure you're good for your climate, or you can use these strips. You can also check the pH level with some types of coolant. In this case, we've got orange Dex Cool. If you've got an import with red dye, the pH reading won't work on the strip. But before I install this, I'm gonna go ahead and put the strip down in the passageway here and get a sample reading of our coolant and pull it out and compare to see for our climate if we're gonna be okay. So right here, we're good somewhere between 35 and 50 degrees below zero. So we're in good shape, but you gotta remember, top this system back off when you get it all buttoned up. One final tip, you might recall our old ECT did not have a lot of sludge around the stud here, but if yours did, chances are the antifreeze didn't get changed and maintained like it should have, and that can actually skew the temperature reading ability of this sensor. So let me come down in. 
Be sure, take your time, don't cross thread anything here, and be sure to follow a torque spec if you've got one. Again, we got 19 millimeter here, very simple. Get it installed. And you probably hear the dripping. We have a drain pan down there to capture all of that old coolant as it all came out. I also kept the wiring harness up out of the path of that dripping antifreeze as it went down. You don't want any of that in the wiring and the, the connector there. So, connector goes back on, only goes one way. Listen for the click. There you go. And be sure to reinstall the heat shield the way it was oriented. Don't forget in this case, the exhaust manifold is really close to that sensor and you don't want any kind of false data coming through the sensor. So, our next step is make sure we're topped off with the proper coolant, we're good on the freezing point. We can either start the vehicle and heat cycle it, check for leaks, make sure we're optimized and then reset the check engine light before we take it on the road test or we can go straight to the road test, reset that check engine light and I think we're gonna be in good shape and John can quit complaining about yet another dashboard light. Tell you what, in fact, he's got his lab coat on over there, garage, Ed is next on Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. <laughs>